I'm Ron together. Thank you for coming today. This is my wife right there. Uh, how you know? That's my name right there. This friend. This is my coach right here. Ever since I was a little boy, you raised me up too. You taught me everything, just like my father did. Uh, thank you for uh, mentoring me and working with me this week. Thank you, sister. Thank everybody for being here. Uh, today's message is a personal message of mine. It comes from the book of Matthew. It's titled, But Yet You Say You Love Me. And uh, it comes from the book of Matthew. It was written around 70 AD. And uh, Matthew was also called Levi, the tax collector. Now, he's like the modern day IRS. You know, he was. Oh, forgive me. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today, Father. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity. Thank you. Forgive me for my eagerness, Father. Allow me to honor you, Father. Allow me to do your will, Father. Amen. Remove all Amen. the business that may be with inside me, Father. Ask that you stand in front of me, Father, and push me back. And allow me to say your words, Father, not my words, Father. Yes, yes. Watch over me, Father. Open their ears, Father. Touch their hearts, Father. Thank you in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 It's titled, uh, But Yet You Say You Love Me. It's taken from the book of Matthew. Matthew was also called Levi the tax collector. You know, today's like our modern day IRS. And uh, he was he was at work. He was sitting at the tax office, and Jesus came to him and asked him, Would you follow me? And Matthew got him, immediately got up and followed Jesus. And he was on his way. He wrote this to the Jewish readers so they could understand that Jesus was the coming Messiah and that he was to fulfill the Old Testament. We start at Jesus' life. He came as he entered the city. So the last week of Jesus' life, he entered into the city of Jerusalem. And the people was of high praise. They would shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, son of David. And it was in high praise. And everybody, there's a multitude of people that followed him into the city. And those that was already in Jerusalem was wondering who he was. They didn't know who he was. They asked him, who is this? They say, that's Jesus of Nazareth. And it was telling the people who he was. If you can imagine, just like when two couple of days ago when Barack Obama came in to town, he went to the night where all the people were surrounding him and giving him hand claps and shaking his hand and giving him high praise. But it was more than that when Jesus came in. Yes. It was hard, it was higher praise than that. Yes, yes. yes. And, he, and as we come, as he entered into the city, the first thing he did, he went into the temple and he cleansed the temple. Mm -hmm. It was in there at the money changer's table. They had the, the doves table. There was exchanging doves and changing money inside of the temple. And Jesus drove them out. He had a whip with uh, cars and he drove them out. He told them that this was not a house. This is a house of prayer. You're making it a den of thieves. Yes. yes. After that, the Pharisees had plotted together with the Heronians. The Pharisees, they believed in the, the law of Moses and the law of the prophets. The Heronians was of a political party. And they, they plotted together to trap Jesus by his words because they knew they couldn't kill him. Because if they kill him, they feared the multitude would come after them. And they would calm them. Or they were people would uprise. So they plotted against Jesus. And they wanted to trap him by his words. One of them asked him, teacher, you, you, you know all truthful and you teach truthful things the way of God. You defer to no one and you show no partiality. Tell us, therefore, what do you think is lawful, to pay taxes or not? And Jesus, fearing, he felt that he perceived their wickedness. And so what he told them, he said, give me a coin. Because he didn't have a coin, so he asked him for a coin. <laughs> Whose description is on this? Right. And he says, this was Caesar's. He said, well, give the things that are Caesar to Caesar. Yeah. And the things that are for God, give them to God. Yes, yes. That's what we have to do. Everything that belongs to God, we have to return it back to him yes. because he gave us everything. Yes. We are nothing without him. So if you have it, give it to, give it to Caesar. Let Caesar have it. But whatever you have for God, give it back to God. Yes. Hallelujah. I can imagine that Jesus, once he told him that, he flipped the coin back to him and told him, have a nice day. Because they left the way. They was amazed. They left the way. Amazing. <laughs> and then after that, as soon as that happened, another tip comes up on Jesus to be trapped by the Sadducees. The Pharisees was behind all these plots to trap Jesus by his words. And then the, once the Sadducees came in, they, they did not believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe at all. There was a priestly aristocrat in the power structure of Israel. All they believed in was the law of Moses. They told that to be all true, and they worshiped inside the temple. So they came upon Jesus and they asked him, teacher, Moses said if a man dies having no male child, then his brother should marry his, his wife to produce offspring, to have a male child to carry on the name. And so they, they put up an illustration where Jesus, they went through seven, she went through seven brothers and having no male child. 
and ask Jesus in the resurrection, well, whose wife would she be? <laughs> so Jesus, he looked at him and said, I can tell he had a confused look. He said, you must not understand the scriptures. You must not know the power of God. <laughs> because in the resurrection, we need to marry or give it in marriage. Amen. For we will be like angels. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And now he also told them concerning the resurrection of the dead, haven't you read what God spoke? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He's not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You can, Amen. Amen. You can clap your hands. You can move your feet. You can do what you want. Yes. You want to yes. And he's going to continue to give it to you as long as you breathe until you see it. All you have to yes. do is confess that you love him. Yes. He will continue to be with you. We serve a living God today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yeah. He won't change. Amen. This is a rather personal message to me because it came as I was reading my oldest son, Princeton. And he was having trouble. He was having trouble listening to his mother. But I didn't spank him. I spared the ride. I did not work. I promise. I talked to him. I asked him a simple question. And the question I asked him, I said, do you love your mother? He immediately said yes. Of course, if anybody would, if you ask me if you love your mother, they're going to say yes. I said, are you sure you love your mother? He said, yes. I said, son, when you love somebody, you must do something to show it. Love is an action word. You can't just say that you love them. When you love somebody, you can smile and look at my mama smile. I'm so proud of smile back to you. Yeah. You try to give them a handshake, they're going to give you a little smile on their face. You <laughs> can give them a handshake, a hug, anything, and watch the smile you put on their face. And I said, son, would you like a gift? His face lit up. At the thought of a present, I didn't even give him nothing, just the thought of a present lit his face up. And that's why you show love. And I'm saying, son, that's how you show love. That's how you show love. But what you do, son, is called lip service. Oh, my, you have a nice dress. My, your toes, oh, they cute, man. That's nice. I like that. That's a nice color. How much? Oh, you got nice hair, man. Oh, yeah, that's cute. I say, son, that's called lip service. That's not showing your mother that you love her. So what you have to do is listen to her and obey her and follow her. And that's going to show her that you love her. I say, so do you think that's showing your mom that you love her when you do the opposite of what she asked you? He, he said, no. He finally began to realize that he wasn't showing her that he loved her. And so I had a similar experience as I am talking to him. Yeah. I can hear a small voice in the back of my head ask me the same question I just asked him. <laughs> so the voice said, do you love me? <laughs> and at this point, I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crazy. Yeah. You see how crazy it will be. I don't think I'm back to you. Do you love me? And I immediately said yes as well. And then, why don't you pray to me like you should? Why don't you talk to me every day like you should? Yeah. Why don't you read yeah. my word like you should? Amen, you amen. Like you should. Amen, amen. And I went in the shop. As I looked at him, his eyes was already filled with tears from me talking to him. And my eyes began to do the same. I had to leave the room. Nobody knew what was going on but me. I left the room and went in there and ended up in my bedroom and was like, man, what is going on? I had to recompose myself, come back out there so I could talk to him. I couldn't even finish my statement without trembling. But that's what the power of God will do. Amen, amen. He won't let you go. Amen. And when he grabs you, you can't shake him. Let's look at what happened when he wrestled with um when Jacob wrestled with him. He ended up with a new name and a broken hip. Yeah, right. He didn't last long. They say he won. Come on. I don't know. No, he won but when we wrestle with God, we wrestle with God from time to time in our own lives. In our own personal lives, in our own situations that we are facing. But that's why we are a body, a body of Christ, so that we can uplift each other. We can talk to each other because whatever I go through, you might have went through and you can counsel me. And whatever you going through, you can help the next person. So make sure you are helping everybody that you see that's going through something that you went through similar. And that's why we're here to lift each other up. Hallelujah. We hear that God wants us, He desires us to love Him. Yes. He wants us to be obedient to His will, His Word, and His Son. He wants it all. All of you, all of me. Yes. I'm going to give it to him today. I hope you're here to give it to him Amen. Him to him Amen. I may not know what I'm doing, but I'm going to stand up here and let him use me. Amen. Here I am. Here I stand. He can use me. He can have this vessel because I didn't create this vessel.
Amen. Amen. And just as the question he asked the Pharisee, they wanted to know what was the greatest commandment. Mm. And God told him, mm. love, love, love him with all your being and love your neighbor as yourself. This is what Jesus was saying to the Pharisees after he had silenced the Sadducees. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees came in the same place at the same time. Just had that one right after another. That's how things happen to us yes. in our lives. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One after another, one after another. There's always be another problem that you have to face, but you understand. You have to stand for God. And they came to him and he asked him, Teach him, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important commandment. There are ten. Then he broke it down to two and he gave him the most important one. And that's to love God first. Yes. And the second is like it. Love, love your, your neighbor, neighbor as yourself. yourself. Now your neighbor is everybody that's next to you. Right. People that stay next door to you. People that you see on the street. Even strangers are your neighbor. Amen. Even though you might not know them. Now the expert that, that was with them was an expert in the law. Now he was an expert in the law of Moses. He wasn't an expert in the law as we know it today. But it holds the same principle. They're trying to trap you by your words and seek them justice and truth. But they didn't know. See, the expert of the law studied and knew the law, but he didn't realize he was talking to the lawmaker. Nah. See, that's what nah. he gets talking. Nah. This is the same thing that happened when the rich young ruler encountered Jesus. He asked him two questions. He asked, what good must I do to enter eternal life? The second question he asked him, what do I still lack? Hmm. The first question Jesus answered and said, why do you ask me about what is good? There's only one who is good. Yeah. And that's the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. There's only yeah. one that is good. Yeah. Yeah. Right there, Jesus was giving him a hint, but he didn't catch that hint. Mm -hmm. If you want to enter into life, notice Jesus didn't say eternal life, he said life. If you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He asked Jesus, which ones? Jesus told him, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness against your neighbor. Honor your mother and your father. Love your neighbor as yourself. The man said, I've kept all of these commandments. What do I still lack? Then Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all of your belongings. Give them to the poor. Then you're going to have treasure in heaven. And once you do that, come back and follow me. There's that hint. See, he had to come back to follow Jesus because that's what he was lacking. Yeah. He didn't realize he was lacking Jesus and God. Yes. The rich little ruler went away weeping because he had many things. Yes. See, according to him, his, his relationship with man was perfect. But what he was lacking in was his relationship with God. And that's what Jesus was telling him. All right. All right. He told him, if you want to be perfect, this is if you want to be perfect. Everything you own, go and sell it. Give it to the poor. Then come and follow me. The greatest commandment is dealing with our relationship with God. The second is dealing with our fellow man. But the second depends upon the first. He told him to love God with all your love. He told him to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment. See, Jesus knows that your thought life and your heart life is where. A man makes decisions. Right. Yeah. You heard the expression, follow your heart. Yes. Some say follow your heart, but take your brain with you. <laughs> As a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. Matt, in chapter six, in the uh, sixth chapter of Matthew, verse 21, Jesus said, For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Mm -hmm. God called David a man after his own heart. It wasn't because David led a perfect life or a sinless life, but David lived his whole life in prayer and constant communication with God. That's what we have to do. We have to constantly seek God's face every day. We have to thank him for his mercies that are renewed each day. We should pray without ceasing. We should praise him. David danced out of his clothes, undignified praise. When we yes. here, we should be tired, exhausted. We should be able to do nothing Sunday evening. We should be so tired from praising them all day long. Amen.
We should read his word, which is sharper than a double-edged sword, and have the power to pierce through the skin and straight to the man's heart. Yes. Right. And we should repent when we do sin. That's what David did. Yeah. He repented. Yes, sir. When we hide his words in our hearts, we might not sin against God. Yes. But all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Yes, sir. When we give God our heart, our mind, and our soul, we will live a sinless life. If we are in the right relationship with God, we love ourselves better, our family members, our friends, our neighbors, and even strangers. I remember back in old New Orleans, because it's the new New Orleans now. Old New Orleans, when you walk by somebody on the street, if you didn't speak, your mama will get you. Nowadays, they walk right by you and pretend that you're not even them, even if they see you. Yeah, That's the do. new New Orleans, post-Katrina era. <laughs> you can't live in the new New Orleans with the old New Orleans mindset. That's why Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind me, I press toward the mark. Uh -huh. Jesus' life on earth was devoted to love. He showed love to everybody. Everybody. He didn't care who you was, what you were yeah. in society. He loved you. And he yes. showed you. And if he had to heal you, he'll heal you right there on site. You didn't have yes. to wait. Yes. He commanded that his Thank disciples you, do the same. How will all men know that you are my disciples? By how you love one another. Yes. The fulfillment of the law and the prophet rest on these two commandments. The main purpose in both of them is love. Love your God, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. In the fifth chapter of Matthew, Jesus said, I did not come to destroy it, but to fulfill the law and the prophets. Jesus' purpose was to fulfill all that they, was, all that they used to hold people down with, because they used it to hold on people's people's heads, and they didn't, they didn't worship in the right way themselves. He took their evil intent to trap him by his words, and he turned it around on them to trap them. Yeah. After Jesus had answered all of their questions, he had asked them a few questions of his own. Right. He asked them, what do you think about the Messiah? Mm -hmm. Whose son is he? All right. They replied, David's. He asked them, how is it that David, inspired by the Spirit, calls him Lord? Yeah. The Lord declared to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David calls him Lord, how can the Messiah be his son? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. No one was able to answer him. No one still is able to answer him to this day. Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus came to show us how to live and how to love. We should follow his example. When we love God with all our being, then we are able to love ourselves like we should. Once that relationship is in order, then we can love our neighbor as well as love ourselves. Just like we love ourselves. The correct order is love God first. Yes. Then you'll be able to love others. You have you have to learn how you you have to learn how to love from the one who created love. Mm -hmm. God is love. Yes. He loved us so much that he sent his one and only son to die for us. For yes. Me, for you, for yes. everybody in the whole world. Yes. He paid a price that he didn't know. He carried the burden for all mankind. My Lord. Yes. We love because he first loved us. Mm -hmm. He still loves us and shows us each and every day. His mercy and his grace. But yet we say we love him. He already proved his love for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, yes. So what are we going to do to prove we love him? Yes.